How many lives do you think your team had tonight? <laughs> you know, that just says a lot about, really about both teams, Rich. You know, you got to give Michigan a lot of credit. Um, I think Brady and I said at the end of the game, you know, I, I think he's a hell of a football coach. And, and uh, we both said somebody had to win this thing, you know. And um, uh, both teams hung in there. Both teams fought hard. And, and uh, you know, thankfully Penn State came out on the winning end. And, you know, it just says a lot about our kids. We're a very resilient bunch of kids that uh, care about each other and really love playing for Penn State. You know, they love this place and they know it means a lot to them in their lives. And they just keep fighting hard for this place. Bill, what can you say about how Bill Belton played tonight, specifically maybe the patience he showed on that fourth down run to, to pick that up for the games on the line there? Yeah, it, you know, that, that was a heck of a run. I thought he had some really nice runs tonight. I thought it was, you know, obviously one of his better games in his career. You know, I can't say enough about him. He's, he's a guy that's grown up a lot on the field and off the field. And, uh, um, you know, I just, I, I think the world of that kid. Bill, over your, um, you went a lot to the run in overtime. Yeah. And especially in big plays on the fourth and inches. Yeah. On a stretch play, as long as what it looked like when the guys were tackling there. And then again. Um, it's like a C-gap play. And the, the left, and, and way over on the left on the stretch play on the, on the winning play. Yeah. They're not stretch plays, though. Okay. Well, how, this offseason, you and I will talk about stretch plays. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a little frazzled. If you so, yeah, well, join the club, Dave. <laughs> Um, anyway, you ran the ball yeah. a lot. Yeah, I felt like in overtime, I think that's a good question because it's something I thought about a lot. I, in overtime, um, you know, they were they're a really good red area defense. And, you know, we threw it on second down, we took a sack. Uh, I think what we tried to do at the end there was run it on first and second down and then have our best third down call. Sometimes it worked out, sometimes it didn't. And we had the fourth and one call. And so, you know, we, we went for it there but uh, on, with the run. But, I tried to, to go a little bit more to the run in overtime because I felt I felt confident in the runs that we were calling. And, and the fourth and inches play, if you go wide there, and, and if you miss it, you're going to get crucified yeah. by everybody. Yeah, I mean, Jordan, I mean, of course I'm going to get crucified, but the, you know, that's part of the job. I mean, but the, the thing is, I thought at that point in time it was the fourth overtime, I think, right? And I felt like it was time for somebody to win the game. I mean, we could sit here and keep trading field goals back and forth, keep trading field goals. I think eventually it was time for somebody to win the game, and I had the opportunity to do it. I, I would probably say that Brady, if he was in that same situation, he probably would have tried to do it. So, you know, I just I felt like it was time to go for the win. Coach, at the end of regulation, back here, Coach, to your left. Uh, at the end of regulation, you actually held up after the touchdown. You actually held up two fingers. Did you think about going for two right then? Yeah, I wanted to win the game there, and then uh, um, I, I, I made a, a decision to go for one there. I, I felt uh, an urge to just go and win the game right there. I, I really feel good about our two-point plays. But at the same time, I said, you know what, Let, let's let's go for one. Let's tie and see how it goes in overtime. Or, you know, I think there were 27 seconds left, and then they drove and had a, you know, a, a winning field goal there to, to kick. So, you know, we, but I felt, I felt, it, I, I changed my mind and, and went with the uh, PAT. Oh, Bill, you're right. Um, on the final point, uh, drive of regulation that touched on, what did that contribute to the education and maturation of Christian Hackenberg? Well, those are those are situations, Joe, that we practice every day. I mean, you guys know that. You know, we practice two-minute situations every single day. And, in fact, that one that we had at the end of the game, we practiced just the other day. I think it was 50 seconds to go in the game. Had the ball, you know, around our own 25, 30-yard line or something like that. And, um, you know, we knew there were specific plays we wanted to run there. And, we just needed the line to really block well, and they did, and uh, and we were able to come up with some big plays. So you know, I, I I think Christian is a obviously a very mature quarterback for for being 18 years old. He's a he's a he's a really he's just a fun guy to coach, and, and you know some of that was was training too, so it paid off. Coach, all the way over to your left, all the way to your left. Anyway, and CJ and uh, the defense. Talk about the resilience of the defense and also CJ's performance. Yeah, I don't think you can say enough about our defense. Um, you know, they just kept coming up big and big, and you know, they gave up a couple plays, but overall, I thought they played a you know well football game. And um, CJ, all those guys. I mean, they were. I was watching them close there at the end. They were rushing hard. They were making it difficult to run the football. I thought all those guys really uh, contributed to the win. And can't say enough about our defense. Bill. Uh... This was a four overtime game. You've coached a lot of games in your career. How many have you been through quite like this with the back and forth? And what does this mean win for your right. team right now? Yeah, it's a, it's a big win for us. Uh, you know, it means a lot. You know, you beat a, a really good Michigan team, 5-0. and 
You're three and two coming off of you know a, a bad loss. Um, I think it says a lot about these kids. It says a lot about this coaching staff. These these coaches here who came back to work on Sunday and tried to put together a good game plan. And our kids went out and tried the best they could to execute it. I've never been in a game like this, Josh. You know, so this is the first for me. I've been in overtime games, obviously in the National Football League, but I've never been in in a in a four overtime game. Bill, there's a lot of talk about you know you guys that getting that number two receiver last week. Uh, Brandon Felder had two touchdowns about four hours ago. Uh, what did he kind of do today that, that really impressed you, and what does he mean to this team moving forward? Well, he means a lot. He's a veteran receiver who's played a lot of football for us and made a lot of big catches, and he hurt his ankle last week and uh, couldn't play against Indiana. It was just good to have him back because he's a, he's a veteran presence. You know, he's, he's played a lot of football. He's a senior. He knows how to run routes. He's been in, in front of 100,000 people, so... It's, it's good to have him in there, and he, he did. He came up with some big plays early on for us today. Phil, what does it say about Allen Robinson to make the two plays that he made at the end of regulation, the one on the sideline and the one down to the goal line? Yeah, well, I think, Rich, you know, he's, he's a great kid. You know, he was frustrated during the game because, you know, the ball wasn't going to him, and I tried to manufacture a play to him with a reverse, and, you know, that didn't work out too good. And, uh, and, and so, you know, we're trying to get him the ball in certain – certain times and other times it's like I said last week it's the read of the play and what it says about Allen is that he never quits and says that about all 100 kids in that locker room they never quit uh, it's not always pretty but a guy like Allen's going to keep hanging in there keep fighting and try to come up with big plays when the ball's thrown to him that's what he did these, these guys are, are um, resilient guys I didn't see a you know you'd have to ask Daquan that I mean he's in the locker room I'm you know I'm I'm a coach so I don't really see that as much but you know I, I knew that they were they're a very competitive bunch and I knew that they felt terrible about the way that things turned out last week so did the coaching staff we didn't coach well last week we didn't play well and we did a little bit better this week and, and the players went out and played a whole lot better and so uh you know, I, I think Daquan is a great example of what, what these guys are all about, tough and resilient and never never die attitude. Coach, back here again to your left. You got some guys leaning up against the railing up there, and then uh, you had some re a lot of recruits here at the game tonight. I'm, I'm assuming that this atmosphere and especially the win it goes a long way in helping get those guys. Yeah, you know, I'm not really allowed to talk too much specifically about recruiting, but I, but I do think that, you know, I'll tell you, you know, what I say, you know, this is uh, what you see is what you get with this staff. Uh, we're a bunch of, uh, you know, hard-nosed coaches that um, believe in, in a philosophy of football, of tough, smart football. Uh, you know, you come to Penn State, you got a chance to play for 100, 108,000 fans. You're going to be on TV every week, and you're going to get a fantastic education. There's over 150 different majors to choose from here. Uh, you graduate here playing football with a degree from Penn State. It's really an unbeatable combination. So, and so hopefully uh, things worked out tonight in that realm too. If, so, two part question here: um, you, know, you really want to get the tight ends established today in the offense. And then, are you ever amazed at the twists and turns that a season just takes? Me when you look from last week to this week, just the complete turnaround in seven days. I think when you're when you're coaching, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21 year old guys like nothing should amaze you you know there's going to be twists and turns there's you know these guys you know look again i've said it a million times these are tough kids uh, they love penn state they love playing with each other the locker room is just a great scene right now because these kids really believe in each other and uh, they felt bad for themselves and they felt bad for the for the fans last week they know that they didn't play well and we didn't as coaches we didn't coach well so you know, they came out and they practiced hard this week, and that's what they'll do next week during the bye week, and that's what they'll do leading up to Ohio State, and, and then we'll see how we play in the games. But uh, it's a fun group to coach, that's for sure. Phil, in those high-stress moments of when you're calling fourth down plays or two-point conversion as opposed to point after, how long do you give yourself to make those decisions, and how decisive do you want to be in those spots? Try to be as decisive as I can, Mark. You know, I, I, I try to give myself, you know, under – um, for you know, under four seconds. I mean, I, I try to have a thought in my mind. Now, with that game there going so long, you almost kind of the well runs dry on some plays. You know, you're you're trying to in some ways draw some plays up in the dirt at some point. But uh, just trying to go back to what I believe in, what I thought was going to be good as I prepared during the week against Michigan, and and try to stick with the plan. And I think overall we did that. I think when we didn't, that was probably not a great play call by me. But I think overall we 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 hung in there and tried to stick with the plan.